Okay, let me repeat again. One of the things. So, any structure member in uh, any structure member sit up or stand up carry load vertically that is column. So you can see buildings. There are a lot of columns in the building. And you can see mere buildings. You can see huge columns. You just uh, watch through your classes. You can see there are huge columns. Uh, all from the end of the block to the end of the block. So those columns carry vertical load. And if the structure member is in horizontal and you apply the force along the direction perpendicular to the, the direction of the structure being set up, being set up, and you will have, you will consider that's a beam. Column also can be considered as a beam. So beam is a large structure, thick structure member, we call it beam. For the aircraft, uh, we also sometimes use beam for large rigid structure, for example, the spa. The spa, sometimes we call it spa beam. And uh, beam is a structure, massive, thick, and it was assembled with a few parts. For the example, a wing spa, it has a top cap, bottom cap, it has web. So we call that a beam. And we don't call the bar head a beam. It's a circular. It's not in the vertical or horizontal direction. So it is just a circle and that Normally, we don't call those as a beam. Anything straight, either vertical or either horizontal, we consider it beam. And if it is set up, set up as vertical, we call it column. So this leaning gear is a very really good example where there's also the force. <laughs> we also have the force rating here. And then we have also the force reactors here. So we're living here. So the force here from the weight is a force here from the weight. Okay, sorry. From the weight of the aircraft. And this is the counteracting force. Reaction to the force. And if you look at this, it's quite similar to what we have seen here. So we can consider this a column. But we apply the load sideways from here as you land, you break, and the load will be applied to the right at the end of this uh, section, is at the end of the structure here, and reacted toward there. So we may consider this as a beam. So this is a good example where we have both beam and column. So any questions so far? So let imagine that we have this uh, as a circular column. And we have force here, reacted over here, we have force here, we have force here. So both here is axial. This one is axial load. Axial load. 
is acting if in this situation it is in the reacting as compression. So it is compression. compression and here as we apply the load through here what we get we get uh, then you bend this okay you apply force here you try to bend such Such is bend. So we have bending. So we have here is bending. Okay. So the such is try to bend. Okay. It's bending. The shear, this is force here. You act, uh, force acted here. As you land, you break. Also a reaction force on this side you will have force trying to cut this gear into two so that is shear okay so we have axial compression we have bending we have shear as we compress we also may get the, this column to buckle. Okay. So this is buckling, buckle. So this is buckle. And you may also get this local failure. Okay, this beam here become crumple, but still stay straight. Crumple, but still stay straight. This one we call it crippling. Okay, so we have all the forces here. We have axial force, compression, or tension. We have bending, we have shear, we have buckle. Uh, we have cripple. And what we need to do, we need to check whether, okay, in stress analysis, okay, in stress analysis, which uses the uh, understanding of mechanics of material and we need to analyze or the forces acted on the structure from the forces we need to calculate the stress and compare with the material strength. So it's similar to what we have learned in the few weeks, the last four weeks, I focus more on trying to calculate the stress, try to understand how to calculate the forces to check all the component of the forces acting on the structure.
and uh, I also give you an exercise and somebody asking to me about wood so I give you the list of the woods type and also its strength so everything in the world we do have those kind of table give you all the strength even to your body component your bone your hair your skin tissues the scientists have tested that tested them and they have values they have the engineering values which consists of the stress strength in terms of stress tensile compression shear and we do those data for almost all material in the world okay now so let's go to the basics so let's go look at the stress the load okay what load that we have we have loads what load that we have we have actual loads which is tension if you pull them together and compression if you compress them so for the landing gear as the aircraft landed it will be compressed and it is compression load actual load but compression not tension as you're taking off you have tension on the landing gear due to the weight of the wheels and the brakes then we have shear load which try to cut the landing gear into two and we have sorry shear and we have we bend and we give you load tension and compression so that is the form of the load uh, why because as you bend material okay, if you bend it you have some curve you can see here is tension and this and this here is complex so we have bending then that is the result of bending we have tension and compression and before and then we also have uh Buckling is we calculate the parameter of buckling is the length of the column, the thickness, and the material. Okay. The length, focus on the length. So what we calculate normally we will calculate what is the permissible buckling load okay we calculate permissible buckling load on the structure and also we have crippling crippling is the local Failure. So you can see the local area of the structure is crumble. Or wrinkle. So that is crippling. So that is what happened to the structure. This is all the full condition and load that you see and how we calculate them. Let's focus on uh, axial shear and bending first. And that's we also another thing I forgot to tell you. This is also torsion. Okay. This is a torsion load. Torsion means the twist. It is the force to twist this 
landing gear. If the landing gear was, if the aircraft landed and the landing gear is skewed to the one side, it's not straight, it's not aligned with the aircraft fuselage, then you will see, uh, for example, you see from the top here, that is possibility the wheels. Okay. Or any gear, and you land this way. But sometimes you may have to issue the wheels which is land sideways. So the force is still here, and there is not a line to this, it's some direction. So there is the land, the force here try to twist the wheels, then this is torsion. Torsion. Okay. So that's what we get. We got this uh, extra load, tension or compression. We got shear, we got bending, which is the tension and compression. We got buckling. Buckling is the failure. It's not stress failure, it's a physical failure. The column will be bent. Crippling is local failure, it's still a failure. It's crumbling. So normally buckling, what we calculate, we calculate what is maximum force to prevent the structure to buckle, the maximum force to prevent the such a to cripple. Only axial we compare with stress, shear we, com we compare with stress. So tension, compression, obviously we compare with the stress. So let's work on axial first. Axial, stress. Okay, what we need, because everything uh, is given in stress, uh, let's work out something first. Uh, say, Just a minute. Uh. Okay, let me show you. Okay, let Okay, you can see this chart here. There is a value for <coughs> shear strength. Okay. Shear. This is for the stainless steel, eh? mechanical properties, we call it. A lot more thing here, but we only focus on this one. We have uh, compression. We have tension. And uh, tensile strength ultimate. So we focus on this one first. So mean that what we do, if you work, if we consider we try to calculate this landing gear in terms of its strength. So you need to calculate the uh, tensile stress. Tensile. Okay, tensile. 
and should not be any stress you get should not be more than okay more than say we use the highest value 450 megapascal sorry 400 300 3100 3, megapascal so 3100 Okay, 3100 mega pascal. So anything, any stress you calculate in total tensile should not be more than 30,100 30, mega pascal. If it is higher, then the part will fail. So you always need to look for the stress which is lower the material strength. So this is material strength. The units are stress. For the compression, should not be more than 3,000. Okay. For compression, so the, the, the stress that you can, can impose or can, should not be more than 3,000. Mega Pascal. And for the shear, should not more than 597. So shear is okay, 597 mega Pascal. So this is the acceptable limit. You need to calculate all this axial stress, tension, compression, and the tension should not be the, the load that you calculate, you calculate the stress from the load should not be more than 31, 3100, 3100 pascal. And we talk about shear should not be more than 597 megapascal. We focus on these two first. Three, in this, on these three. So this is just review. So you have any question on this one? So what I'm trying to show here is I'm trying to show the practicality and where the knowledge that you are doing now to acquiring this knowledge to calculate the stress, where this knowledge will go to. Okay. That is what I'm trying to explain now. The application of this uh, knowledge in calculating the shear from the forces on the structure. Any questions? 